Hey guys, Kev here, and I am going to do a kind of um, maintenance disassembly uh, video for you guys. Um, I am going to install some skiff bearings here. So I got six sets of these skiff bearings that will fit um, smaller sized uh, pivots. So it took me a while to figure out the best set. I have a whole bunch here. Uh, and you know me, I didn't measure or anything. I just figured out what fits what and then bought more. So I want to hook up my Axon that I just got, even though the action on this one is just stupid. I don't even know if I want to mess with that one. The impulse here definitely uh, could use some love in the bearing department, I think. And then I have two of my F5.5s. This is the green micarta. Um, also has relatively good action and the titanium, which, uh, I think is the one that really needs some love. I mean, none of these have bad action. They're good, but, uh, I'm a snob and you know how it goes and I want them to be better. So I bought six sets, right? Basically because I wanted to get as many as I could without going broke. They're like 12 bucks a pop. So I didn't want to go crazy. Um, so I bought um, six sets. So I have uh, one for each of my F5.5s. I have another one of those coming in natural micarta. So I'll have the full set of them because um, I also have this one here in the uh, carbon fiber. And um, so that's four sets. And then I have these two Vero knives. So that was my plan. Uh, I'm just going to do a few of them now. I don't know if I'll get to all these right the second um but we shall see if that works um the f5.5s they are pretty damn easy to uh install so i'm not too uh worried about them i feel like i'm missing some here so one okay so this has two sets in it so let me get rid of that so we'll have one two three four yeah okay um yeah so Let's see, is that light okay? I don't know if this is better or worse. It's really hard for me to tell. I'm gonna go leave it on. So hopefully it's okay, guys. Uh, let's just start with an F5.5 because they're simple. You've seen me do this before. Um, you just pop this bad boy out, pop this bad boy out. And hopefully this time I won't drop a screw down into the clip and uh, cause a whole bunch of issues for myself. Pop that off, and there you go. So this washer actually came off this time. It's never happened before, that's interesting. Pop that back in there. Take the blade off. Yeah, I don't know how anybody, I've said this before, I don't know how like Nick Shabazz does this all the time through the camera, like, I can't do that. I need to be looking underneath it or something. Um, I don't know what I'm grabbing at, you know? Um, so let's put those aside. I'll pour these out. Set number one, guys. Let's hope I got the right size. They had a bunch in stock. They sell out quick, but they tend to drop a bunch at a time, and then you just got to jump on them, you know? Um, I'm going to do really light. Uh, application here on the here I can zoom in a little bit on the um, KPL just because it's pretty lubed up in here already probably from me uh, oh it just fit I was a little worried there for a second guys um, I'm gonna drop here drop there bada bing bada boom trying to do this relatively quick um, I don't want to bore you guys with a bunch of disassembly stuff, but um, I also really enjoy doing this stuff. So it's kind of cool to show you and give you a little bit of desktop view. Um, so I know I do a lot of the face cam stuff and you guys want to see these knives a little better. Maybe uh, at least that's my theory. Drop this guy on. Boom, boom. Drop this on. I mean, these F5.5s and really any Riot made knife, listen for the click that I just heard. Um, any Riot made knife is just so good when it comes to taking it apart and putting it back together. Um, 
it's just it's so simple it's just uh, it's just a pleasure you know um this doesn't seem like it's on there there we go yeah something's off so hang on there we go If you guys recall, the last time I did this, I marred up the scale up here somewhere, um, which was sort of a shame, but um, it's all good because I'm not like a collector collector where like, I'm keeping these knives in pristine order so I can sell them in five years and make some money, you know? Like, I carry all my knives, I use all my knives, not that I use them a lot, you guys know that, but, um, I carry them, and, um, I try to take care of them, obviously, but I'm not gonna worry about a scratch here and a scratch there, and if I ever sell it, I will let people know what's going on but i don't plan on selling these f5.5s anytime soon Ooh, okay any blade play nope i locked this down pretty good too that's impressive maybe a little too much yeah Locked it down really good. No play. Oh, yeah, that's already better. Okay, boom. F5.5, number two here. Ugh. This one I have never taken apart, so it may require this guy. I don't want that pivot to come out, so. Am I in there or what? Come on. <sighs> yeah, this one is the one that uh, Kyle sold me. And uh, I don't think he ever took it apart. So this will be the first time this guy is apart. And I'm guessing this one may need to be clean. Um... Obviously, the other one I just did does not... Oh, see, that is not what I wanted. Okay, so, hang on. Just to make it easy, because I don't really want to deal with taking both sides off. I'm going to tighten this guy down. This is what I hate about spinning pivots, guys. It's a real pain, so I'm going to hold this one and try to get this one out. There we go. I kept wanting to unscrew the other side, and that's what tends to happen with a spinning pivot, and it's still <sighs> happening. It just won't come. Okay. I'm just going to do it this way, guys. I'll roll with the punches, right? Oh, almost lost that guy. Yeah, you don't get a ton of torque with this um, bit driver. You get a lot more with one like this Weeha down here. Um, God. Oh, so now you want to come out this side. Great. This is what I was saying earlier. It's just such a pain about these spinning pivots and they use them on on all parts of the knife like even these backspacer screws are spinning so you have to have you know two in there let me just tighten this one back down so it doesn't come back to haunt me since it seems we're going in from the other side right okay boom Take that apart, bada bing, bada boom. Take these off. I'm trying to do this a little bit quicker just because I have a few knives to get to and 
don't want to spend all day on one knife. So I will grab the bearings. And this knife is actually relatively clean inside. Um, I'll probably just do a quick wipe down. And again, I'm still getting used to this desktop stuff, so... Uh, oh, jeez, that thing almost ran away on me. Bink. Bunk. All right, in. Okay, so I have a uh, gun cleaning cloth here. I'll just run that over everything. And um, I've showed you the inside of this knife before, but I just love... I just love the work that Riyadh does, and, and all they have in here is the Urban EDC logo right here with the bomb. It's a Vox and Urban EDC kind of combo logo, and then they're numbered inside so they know um, they're putting the, the proper knife together, and that's it. It's just really, really cool. Um, there's a little bit of grime in here. Sorry. I told you the other day I rigged this up pretty good. Um... <laughs> so it's not the best and it's never going to look the same two days in a row because I'm just laying it on top of a a sheet of notebooks or whatever uh, ingenuity people it's the American way yeah this is pretty clean so I'm happy with that Kyle takes care of his knives luckily so which one do I I normally want to put the pivot on. Well, I'll just build it the way I took it apart. I don't like to have the uh, lock side be the one on the bottom. Just because, I don't know, superstition? or I don't have a good reason, actually. So, don't listen to me, please. Bink. Bunk. Bink. Bunk, 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 bunk. Put a little bit on here. Drop this guy on this guy. Boom, boom. See, I just don't like it because, you know, I don't know. I lost the stop pin. Here it is. Preferably would have put that in first. Um, then I need to do this. Pink, bunk. So, there we go. So, yeah. We are good to go on this guy. Put this on. Click, 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 click. Anybody? See, this is where... This is why I don't like doing it from this side. Because now I got to... Take... There we go. Sorry. You can see that it's mostly back together. I don't know if I mentioned, but I ordered another one of these Zerk um, drivers. I found one from a company called Scout Leather Co. And it looks almost identical to this one here that I got from Brian Brown Knives. And I would have bought another one from Brian Brown Knives. It's just that they're dropped and like they're limited and there wasn't a drop. But yeah, I ordered another one from Scout Leather Co. It looks identical. So, I'm um, pretty happy with that. And my toolkit thing came in that I mentioned before. Um, so, I'll be doing a video on that, I think. Just showing me setting up my new kind of maintenance setup. I don't know. I don't know how interested you guys are in these types of videos. You tell me. Um, I'm just kind of filming what I'm doing anyway. Like, this is what I would be doing. So... I figured why not get it on camera for you. No play. And I've heard with skiff bearings, they need to break in. So I'm not going to go loosening the pivots on these too much. Um, I mean, they're already really good. And I don't really want to loosen pivots to get better action. I want a tight pivot and good action, you know. Um and I think I'm going to get that here. Just got to break it in, right? And these have to wear in a track. So th those are the um, F5.5s, all right? Let's get to the mini impulse here. So this guy I had to lock tight down. Um, 
but looks like that already was broken off the seal anyway on my Loctite. So I think it was holding pretty well where it was. These are also fairly easy to take apart. Not much of a difference. Um, I think there's one more screw. I'm not, yep, this one. As soon as I turn this, you'll see the knife start to come apart. Yep, there it goes. I just gotta get it out enough. Boom, there we go. All right. Oh man, look how dirty that is, right? Already. This is from me um, having this knife for like a week and playing with it. I mean, I definitely fidget a lot, but I mean, that's crazy. It picks up a lot of dirt. And I've asked recently, why does Vero use these nylon cage bearings? And I got to remember the pivot goes on the show side. Um, and I've been told that it's because you can run them dry. And uh, Joseph Vero prefers to run his knives dry. Um, but on the Axon, they went with brass cage bearings. So I don't know. It's interesting, maybe just because of the action it needed that, um, but that's kind of the backstory on why these are nylon, and I actually think they're fine, um, but I really want to improve the action on this guy. Um, I sort of expected it to be better, to be honest, than it than it is, um, and I got it dialed in pretty good with no play, And but you know how I am, so I'm going to try to do a better jab. But I may end up having to put those back in. Just, I don't know. I think that might happen. Back out here, sorry. All right, let's clean this bad boy off really quick. I mean, it is so easy to take a knife apart and clean it when it is well made. But if you get a knife that is cheap and just like, you can tell when a knife is just like pieced together to keep it functioning, you know? <laughs> like it's not engineered properly. It's just like they add shit so that it'll stay together and work like that's not engineering that's just like jerry rigging you know i don't know that's my theory on that i i can't stand taking apart certain knives it takes forever to get them back together like um i think this one was one it's not hard but like you know you got to get the lock out of the way and everything has to go in its right place i don't know if it was that one or something else i recently took a part and I was just like baffled at how much shit went into it inside like unnecessary you know so this is the show side now the key to this one it took me a little bit the first time I took this apart to get it back together properly it's keyed here you see that on the pivot and that has to go on this side and lock in and if you don't get that right it will it will work but it won't properly like seat and then you're sitting there wondering what is going on with my knife. Um, and it's really just something super simple. And I like that design because then the pivot should not come loose, even though it kind of does. So anyway, pop that in and you'll see there now it sits flush, right? But if I turn it this way, it won't go in all the way. There, it's flush. So I just want to keep it that way. That is the hard part, so there we go, okay. Get our Libre Carton. I mean, I know this has to be boring, but whatever. I'm doing it anyway, so I might as well um, show you. This one's interesting, it doesn't have a groove cut out for the bearing. Um, the bearing just kind of rides on the blade. A lot of knives have grooves there and then the stop pin is inside the blade that's cool engineering to me i really really like that so he definitely thought this out very well and this is you know i'm guessing this is just like the full size impulse um so this was his first design this is just a mini version and you can see the detent ramp right here detent ball ramp so that's really cool to see this is the kind of stuff you need to have on these expensive knives. Like I unboxed the Shiro the other day, or it was last night, and um, it didn't have 
a detent ball rant. We're talking about like $900 knives from Russia. CKF doesn't do it either. At least not on the designs I've seen. It's just strange to me. Am I missing anything while I'm jibber jabbering here? So it should just pop right on. Bada bink, bada boom. Um, and then what I'll usually do is flip it over and get this screw in the back going again with this long one. Because that kind of held everything in place to begin with. Ooh. Yeah, I really love this knife. Uh, just some minor things I've noticed. Um, it can hurt a little bit. Um, when you flip it too much. Because of the way that the flipper's designed. I'll show you that when I get to it. Uh, zoom back out. Sorry. I'm learning. I don't plan on doing a ton of tabletop stuff. So... Uh, I apologize if that's what you're into, but, you know, there's tons of channels for everything. Um, you know, I like to just be on camera and, and be an idiot and joke around and whatever. You know, I have fun with it. Um, so, that's me. I can do that like this, but, I don't know. It's not as, it's not as fun for me, I don't think. So, I'm pretty tight here, guys. I'm gonna just see. Ooh, hello. Um, I think it's still loose, though. Now we barely have any play. Let's tighten it a little more. No play. Okay, now we might be too stiff, right? Uh, bloop. No play. I feel like I need to tighten something. I can feel something, so hang on. Yeah, I think that's the clip. The clip is a little weird on this. But anyway, this flipper right here is a bit rough. I sanded it a little bit. Didn't really do anything. And you'll see this is number 51. I don't know if I showed that, but um, it can hurt a little bit to do this over and over, you know? So action is pretty good right out the gate there, just from my initial tuning. Um and I have no play, so I am going to leave this one alone for now. And we will get to this last one. That's the one I'm worried about, guys, because I don't want to... I mean, you'll see the action on this is phenomenal already, and I don't know if I want to mess with it. But I want to put skiff bearings and everything, so here we go. Wow, that was pretty loose right off the gate there. That's interesting. Same old keyed pivot type thing here. Same pretty much design, right? I mean, is that what we're looking at here? Take this guy out. These are not spinning pivots. Um, see, I like this design of the driver because it has this thing. So I can just stick this in and then kind of spin it in my palm and it comes out. That little driver, it's hard to keep it a grip. What is going on here? The screw felt stripped for a second, but I guess it's not. Must be me. Shove that out. Now, we, what do we have here? Same clip thing going on. Yep, you have the same old down here. This screw holds everything together, I guess. Hold on. No, that's... Maybe they are free spinning. I think it's just, there we go, okay. Oh, it was the lock, geez, okay. I am confused, okay, boom, got it. Oh, this guy is pretty dirty in there, okay. Get this out, all right. Okay, zoom in. Here's the internals of the Vero Axon, if you're curious. Really, really milled out. That is awesome to see. Um, clean this off. I don't even want to mess with pushing the pivot out. Uh, I don't even know if I can, but it feels pretty solid in there. And it's clean anyway. So, not going to mess around too much in here. This knife was running like a gem. So, I feel really stupid doing this. Because I know what's going to happen. 
I'm going to end up with worse action than I had going in. And then I'm just going to sit there and complain. So get ready for that, guys. I mean, there's a little bit of schmutz in it. So you'd think that cleaning that out would do good, not bad. So we shall see, my friends. We shall see. Same uh, same bearings there as you saw in the F5.5. Again, said this before too. I think there's a company that just, you know, makes a crap ton of those bearings and sells them. Um, so I think that's how it works. Think bunk. Boom. All right. Then we have the blade. Sorry, I know I'm the worst at keeping this thing on camera because I'm not looking through it at all. <laughs> I realize how stupid that is, but you know, stop pin. Do not be a pain in my. Okay, thank you. Drop you, drop you. You know, liberal amount. And then we have you. Bink, bunk, bunk, bunk. Same uh, detent ball ramp. Awesome. Drop a little bit on the detent ball here. Boom. Close her up. Hopefully, the lock is going to be key here. Liner locks seem harder to put together for me, honestly. Let me zoom out. Just because the lock gets in the way, you have to keep the lock out of the way and kind of, there we go. And it seems like I'm overdoing it with the lock, right? So then I try to shut the knife a little bit. It's just, I don't know. It never feels perfect to me putting a liner lock back together. And then all of a sudden it like clicks into place and you're good to go. It's very, very strange. Frame lock, normally you can kind of set everything up. Well, I guess that F5.5 is a liner lock, and that doesn't have any issues, so I don't know. Maybe it's just certain liner locks are like that. Pivot. There, heard a good click. Let me make sure nothing's wrong. Tighten it down. Okay. So let's just take a quick gander. Okay, we're still dropping shut pretty good. Centering is dead on. Just tighten things up a little bit here. Be careful not to over tighten. So I want to use this guy. It's one reason I love this kind of driver. You really can't over tighten. Again, I've mentioned this, unless you're Hulk Hogan or something, and you happen to really like knives. I <laughs> think that's pretty good. Oh, shit. <laughs> Sorry, I just smacked the crap out of the... All right. Uh, maybe a tiny bit of play. Let's see. Oh, yeah, we had some room there. No play. Now it's a little stiff, obviously. Which makes sense, because it was too tight. Loosen that a touch. No play. Oh, ho, ho, ho. this knife is just absolutely butter, guys. Look at that. And that's like dead centered and no blade play. And we're talking about it dropping like that i mean i'm sure i could get it to go even better but i prefer my knives to have a tight lock up and i'm not too worried about getting it to absolutely fall shut if i have that uh solid no blade play situation going on and this is good and it, those skiff bearings are going to wear in and it's going to be absolute money look at that centering guys we're dead nuts. This is perfect. So there you go, guys. That is the uh, Vero Engineering Impulse Mini. 
the Vero Engineering Axon. Let me get some stuff out of the way here. Axon, the uh, Urban EDC Supply F5.5 in titanium, and the Urban EDC Supply F5.5 in green micarta. These all now have skiff bearings in them if you're curious what the size is for this it's the five millimeter pivot and the uh the width basically the balls are 0 0.0625 it's also called 1 16th inch so same difference there one's a decimal one's not but those are the ones that fit in a lot of these knives this size once you get into uh, bigger knives like this here, um, Arc Form Slimfoot, which isn't that much bigger actually. And these two have a lot in common, the mini impulse in this. Um, this one takes a bigger size bearing and um, man, it's so smooth with these skiff bearings in it. You'll see them in there. It also had nylon bearings before. Um, and I swapped them out for skiff. And this made a huge difference on this knife. Um, I also put them in my Richard Rogers OEM slut or slim utility. Um, and that I didn't really notice a difference. And that those were the same size as all of these. Um, and I, I actually sent that knife off to Rogers to look at just because there was some weird things going on with it. And um, I was thinking about selling it or trading it. And I can't do that with a knife that may have issues. I'm not that guy. So I'm going to get it taken care of. And then I'll decide what to do. But Skiff Bearings, guys, they are awesome. Awesome company. I really want to try a Skiff Drifter or something once I'm rich, you know. <laughs> um, but yeah, those are Skiff Bearings. And thank you for watching this uh four knife disassembly hope it wasn't too boring for you um you know i got you know i love you guys very very much and um i hope you have a fantastic day and i will catch you later